Just the finest of materials, really official. Hey, I'm B, and today I'm turning this oil drum into two planters and a fire pit. So sparks are gonna fly. I'm B, a designer and a DIYer with a passion for home improvement. Whoa! I just bought my first house and it needs a lot of work. A lot of vandalism, rodent, stripper pool here, rat stage here. So it's time to put my skills to the test. I love learning from the pros, but sometimes I'm gonna try things my way. Join me for the adventure. So I found this old oil tank on the property. Do you need to push it from the bottom at all? Oh, I don't know who took it out of the ground, but it's out. And instead of recycling it or throwing it away, I wanna put it to use. So I immediately thought of planters, like the green kind of plants trellising over this thing, a fire ring, and maybe uh, another ring to hold firewood. Sounds sturdy enough. <laughs> you can kind of hear how hollow it is and that it's not full of oil. We did um, drain some of the oil out and you gotta be careful with oil. So we collected it in some containers and actually were able to recycle it at a gas station. Your dad siphoned off most of it with yeah. that diesel. Just the finest of materials, really official. So the tools I need for this project, an angle grinder, extra blades, a powerful drill, some metal bits, oil, gloves, plants, chalk line, tape measure, and you can't forget safety gear. So now I've got everything to make this DIY come to life. Let's get into it. There we go. We've now got this blue chalk showing us where to cut. All right, so we have to begin cutting. Let's suit up with the safety gear. So sparks are gonna fly. The heat from the sparks would never like catch the oil on fire, right? No. Okay, good. No, diesel fuel is not really combustible like that. It's, okay. If it was gasoline, maybe the fumes coming off of it. Yeah, but not, not it's not gonna fuel. Okay, well, how, how am I doing? I'm doing good. Okay. It's an oil sludge nightmare. <laughs> Definitely sounded a little more hollow than that. So we got a bit of cleanup to do. <laughs> a little bit of cleanup. So this is like a solvent. This is a stripper that's just gonna help clean off the inside of the ring. Just so we make sure that like no oil is leaching into the soil. Okay, now that we've got our four pieces Maybe you can see it. Planter, fire wood ring, fire pit ring, and another planter. So I'm just throwing on a different kind of blade. And this blade is going to just like sand down the edges. So now that I have the planters cut, I need to drill some drainage holes so that water doesn't get stuck inside. Now I'm gonna work my way up to the right size hole, but I'm gonna start with this bit here. I might just use a spot that already has a little bit of a depression. And there's not really a rhyme or reason to where I'm placing these, just kind of evenly spacing them around the bottom of this tank. Whoa! Gotta be on top of this one. So I drilled the first hole with the bit, but it's, it's taking too long, I think. And so I wanna try a different technique using the angle grinder, which was pretty quick uh, to cut it. I'm just gonna get power out here. There's no big secret around power tools. It's just knowing and educating yourself on how to use them properly. And then having the right safety gear, you can do it with confidence. You can do it uh, and use them the right way to make something as crazy as this. I'm the kind of person who goes in blind to a lot of things, but I do think when you're using power tools, it's really important to watch a tutorial, especially when it's something that can be dangerous that you can cut yourself with. No idea how much this weighs, but I'm weak and I can pick it up, so. Now that the tank is clean and we took out all the oil, I'm gonna drop in a layer of wood chips. I stopped a tree trimmer on the side of the road 
And I said, can I have those wood chips? And a couple hours later, he drove up to my house and was dumping them in the yard. I'm just trying to get them so they'll sit right, right on top, or right underneath the lip of the planter. I don't want them sitting above it. I just want them sitting right below it. It's time to get these plants into the planter. So I decided that I wanted to go with a perennial arrangement. And that just means plants that come back every year. The other criteria that I wanted for this planter was natives. That means plants that are native to this area. And then pollinators. I wanted plants that would foster habitat and food for bees and butterflies. I'd say she's looking abundant and looks like a bee and butterfly playground. We're left with our firewood ring and our fire pit. So now we just have to get these things up there. They are light enough, oh gosh, to roll. I love this little spot on my property. There's only an acre, but there's this little spot right above my house and it just has the perfect view of the ridge line. And it's just like such a good elevation for a fire pit. And there's this like natural break in the trees for the smoke. Yeah, we just need to like right there. Yeah, that looks, that'll look nice. Can't carry it. Okay. Do a little digging, set this in let's say like four inches, enough to get that little spout underground. So I've seen variations of these kind of firewood rings uh, to wrangle your firewood online. And I just, we had so much of this tank that I figured it was an easy, kind of an easy solution instead of, as you can see, this giant pile of firewood. So I'm just gonna kind of level this out here and then I'll just secure it with two rocks Sweet, and I just want, just want to build it up on the front a little bit. Firewood is best when it dries out, so you can't cut a tree down and the same day expect to burn it. It needs to sit uh, and dry out. I think that can take, you know, a year. This is a tree that was dead, so hopefully it's dry enough to burn. The last piece. I'm gonna see how Liam's doing. You dug, now you're using Just, that board to smash it into place. Yeah. Would it help if I stood on it? Um, Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of this. This board is about to break. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's build a fire. I'm pretty happy with the way that this transformation turned out. I was able to take this giant piece of metal and turn it into three things that are pretty useful to me. This project was really rewarding for me because during home renovation, you create a lot of waste. And so this was a nice change of pace to be able to take something that pretty much was trash and turn it into something else. It's a good reminder to really assess the things that you're tossing in case they can be used as something else. Cheers. Oh, you don't have a marshmallow. <laughs> now I just gotta finish the house. <laughs> and just that.